We're back here again with more tributes on our channel, Fame Story TV. In this tribute video, we honor well-known actors who passed away today. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. These legends made significant contributions to their fields, and unfortunately, have left us today. We extend our condolences to their families and friends. Rest in peace. But before we begin, please show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you. Cello Motlum was a celebrated South African actor, born on November 4, 1970, in Meadowlands. His career spanned over three decades, during which he became known for his versatility across television, film, and theater. He appeared in popular TV shows such as Backstage, Generations, Isidingo, and Mamelo, and gained international recognition for his roles in Human Cargo and the number one ladies detective agency. Motloom was also notable for his role as Nelson Mandela in An Act of Defiance 2017, and for films like How to Steal Two Million and Invictus. In addition to his screen work, he had a strong presence in the theater, performing in productions such as The Good Woman of Sharkville and Master Harold and the Boys. Over the years, his performances earned him several nominations, including one for Best Supporting Actor at the Mnet All Africa Film Awards. Sadly, Selo Motloom passed away on September 15, 2024, at the age of 53 after collapsing at his home. He was taken to the hospital but could not be saved, passing due to undisclosed breathing problems. His death was mourned by fans and colleagues, who remembered him as a passionate actor and mentor to young talent. Uh, a solo album that featured B.B. King, George Benson. Tito Jackson, born Toriano Adaril Jackson on October 15, 1953, was an original member of the legendary Jackson Five, a group formed with his brothers Jackie, Jermaine, Marlon, and Michael. Born in Gary, Indiana, Tito grew up in a musical family and helped launch the group's success under the guidance of their father, Joe Jackson. The Jackson Five rose to fame in the late 1960s with hits like I Want You Back and ABC, becoming one of Motown's biggest acts. Beyond his role in the Jackson Five, Tito later pursued a solo career, releasing albums like Tito Time in 2016 and Under Your Spell in 2021. He continued to perform with his brothers as part of the Jacksons into his later years. On September 15, 2024, Tito passed away at the age of 70. He suffered a medical emergency near a mall in Gallup, New Mexico, and was transported to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The exact cause of death has not yet been confirmed, and investigations are ongoing. His sons, Taj, Terrell, and TJ, announced his passing on social media, expressing their grief and celebrating Tito as a loving father who cared deeply for others. Tito's death marks the end of an era for the Jackson family, with many remembering his significant contributions to music and his warm, caring personality. I'm going to be in Dallas. They wouldn't move the date, so sorry. We're with you in heart and spirit. And, uh... J.D. Souther, born John David Souther, on November 2, 1945, in Detroit, Michigan, was a renowned singer-songwriter and actor. He was a key figure in shaping the Southern California rock scene in the 1970s. Best known for co-writing hits for the Eagles, such as New Kid in Town, Best of My Love, and Heartache Tonight, Souther's contributions to music spanned several decades. He also collaborated with other major artists like Linda Ronstadt and James Taylor. His solo work included hits like You're Only Lonely, which reached the top 10 in 1979. Apart from music, Souther pursued acting, appearing in shows like 30-something and Nashville. His warm personality and immense songwriting talent earned him a dedicated following and lasting influence in the music industry. J.D. Souther passed away at his home in New Mexico on September 17, 2024, at the age of 78. While the cause of his death hasn't been publicly disclosed, he is remembered for his extraordinary contributions to music and his lasting legacy as a songwriter. Same for the last 40 years. Um... I have a room like this. Nelson DeMille was a prominent American novelist, known for his action-adventure and suspense novels. Born on August 23, 1943, in New York City, DeMille gained fame for books like Plum Island, The Charm School, 
and The General's Daughter. He also wrote under various pseudonyms such as Jack Cannon and Brad Matthews. DeMille studied at Hofstra University after serving in the U.S. Army, which influenced many of his military-themed novels. His storytelling often combined thrilling plots with rich characters. In June 2024, DeMille announced he had been diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Despite his illness, he remained positive, continuing his work on multiple projects, including a collaboration with his son, Alex DeMille. Sadly, he passed away on September 17, 2024, at the age of 81, in Mineola, New York, from complications related to cancer. High and rising. How high water Tommy Cash, the younger brother of Johnny Cash and a country musician in his own right, died September 13, at 84. His death was announced by a statement from the Johnny Cash Museum. This great man will be deeply missed by his friends and many loyal fans around the world, museum founder and CEO Bill Miller said. Born April 5, 1940, in Dias Arc, Cash joined the Army at a young age and was a DJ for the Armed Forces Radio Network. After his military service, Cash played with Hank Williams Jr. and secured a record deal from Musicore Records in 1965. A few years later, he scored his biggest hit with Six White Horses, which was dedicated to John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., and Robert F. Kennedy in the wake of their assassinations. Cash continued touring at least until 2016. Press and stuff, because I just didn't think it was true that he, would, he wouldn't have to. Bill Kenneth Cope, a British TV star who had acclaimed roles in the 1960s and 70s, died September 11 at 93. A Liverpool native, Cope studied acting at the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School. His two most famous roles were as Jed Stone on the working-class soap opera Coronation Street, a role he originally played from 1961 to 1966 and then returned to in 2008, and as the titular Marty Hopkirk on Randall and Hopkirk, deceased, a murdered detective who comes back as a ghost to help his surviving partner solve the crime. In the United States, it was known as My Partner the Ghost. The song was My Love Kintyre. The year was 1977. Denny Lane, a co-founder of the Moody Blues and Wings, died at age 79. He founded the Moody Blues in 1964 with Mike Pinder and Ray Thomas, spending two years with the band and singing on its first hit, Go Now. In the years after he left, Lane performed as a solo artist and in groups such as the Electric String Band, Balls, and Ginger Baker's Air Force. In 1971, he joined Paul and Linda McCartney to form McCartney's post-Beatles group, Wings. He was the only non-McCartney member of Wings who remained with the band for the full decade before it disbanded in the early 80s. After Wings, Lane continued to perform as a solo artist, releasing his last studio album, The Blue Musician, in 2008. Graffiti, a bit of graffiti all over the place, I used to say. Benjamin Zephaniah, poet and actor, died at age 65. The UK-born Zephaniah published his first collection of poetry, Pen Rhythm, in 1980, and two years later released the album Rasta, on which he was backed by Bob Marley's band The Wailers. In addition to writing and performing his poems, Zephaniah took small roles on the British TV shows EastEnders and The Bill, and was ultimately cast as the character Jeremiah Jesus on the Cillian Murphy headlined Peaky Blinders. Zephaniah's passing was announced on social media by his family. According to the message, the poet was diagnosed with a brain tumor eight weeks prior to his death. Norman Lear, the legendary television producer and philanthropist behind All in the Family, The Jeffersons, One Day at a Time, and other landmark sitcoms, died at age 101. The official cause of death was cardiac arrest. Born in New Haven, Conn, in 1922, the Emmy-winning and Oscar-nominated pop culture icon is best known for revolutionizing sitcoms in the 1970s, with series that made strides in on-screen representation and didn't shy away from hot-button topics, including abortion, birth control, mate-swapping, homosexuality, religion, menopause, and most relentlessly, racial and ethnic stereotypes. His family announced the news in a lengthy statement on Lear's website, in which they reflected on his life of curiosity, tenacity, and empathy as he sought to reflect justice and equality for all through his robust contributions to the entertainment industry. 
Ralph Sorella, a longtime friend and stylist to Howard Stern who frequently appeared on his popular radio show, died at 58. The emotional host announced the news on Sirius XM's The Howard Stern Show, revealing that Sorella was receiving treatment for a rare lymphoma when his heart gave out. Sorella first connected with Stern when he called into his WNBC radio program in 1985. He was later hired to do special effects on Stern's late-night variety show and went on to work as his personal stylist for decades, also becoming a wardrobe consultant and set designer for the show. Sorella briefly hosted the Friday show on Howard 100 Radio, but is best remembered for his guest appearances and frequent call-ins to the Howard Stern show. Stern also credited Sorella as the reason he starts every episode with, Hey Now. Dominated by all the things she told me. Ellen Holly, the pioneering One Life to Live actress who became the first black performer in a starring role on U.S. daytime television, died at 92. A New York native, Holly performed in Broadway productions and took small parts on television shows, but found it difficult to find work early in her career. In 1968, the New York Times published a letter to the editor from Holly titled, How Black Do You Need to Be?, which criticized the media, the entertainment industry, and audiences for maintaining a narrow view of what black performers should look like. That perspective, Holly said, made it virtually impossible for light-skinned black actors like her to find work. The letter caught the attention of One Life to Live creator Agnes Nixon, who cast Holly as Carla Gray, a light-skinned black actress whose character was inspired by Holly's life experiences. Holly appeared on the series from 1968 to 1980, then again from 1983 to 1985. Her other screen credits included Spike Lee's School Days, the soap opera Guiding Light, and the 2002 TV movie 10,000 Black Men Named George. I've still not recovered. <laughs> That's what happens. Ryan O'Neill, the Oscar-nominated actor whose tumultuous personal life always threatened to overshadow his work in films like the early 70s hits Love Story and Paper Moon, died at 82. The late actor had been diagnosed with chronic leukemia in 2001 and with prostate cancer in 2012, the latter of which came three years after the death of his longtime love, Farrah Fawcett, from anal cancer at 62. O'Neill landed his first major acting role on NBC's Western Empire, but his breakthrough came as Rodney Harrington on ABC's Peyton Place. His other notable film credits include What's Up Doc, Barry Lyndon, A Bridge Too Far, The Main Event, and The Driver. I it in the first place, I should even went over there to see Mork, even with, even with Alana Shannon. Anna Chickadee Cardwell, the eldest daughter of reality TV star Mama June Shannon and half-sister of Alana, Honey Boo Boo Thompson, died at 29. Shannon announced Cardwell's death on Sunday, sharing that she died peacefully while surrounded by family after one hell of a fight with the disease. Cardwell famously appeared alongside her mother and sister in both TLC's Toddlers and Tiaras and their family spin-off, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. She later became a mother to two daughters, Caitlin and Kylie. News broke in March of this year that Cardwell had been diagnosed with stage 4 adrenal carcinoma in her liver, kidney, and lung. Four months later, her mother confirmed the diagnosis to be terminal. Honey Boo Boo paid tribute to her sister in a touching social media post, I really don't know what to say as my heart is completely broken," she wrote on Instagram. Watching my 29-year-old sister this last year battle this horrible disease hasn't been easy. Anna was a fighter and still is. We will all make sure your legacy lives on forever. And I promise to always make sure to celebrate our birthday like you never left. The sky looks a little bit different today. We will always love you, Anna. Stan Rogow, the Emmy-nominated producer behind the Disney Channel hit Lizzie McGuire, died at 75 at UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles. Per The Hollywood Reporter, no cause of death has been disclosed. Born in 1948, Rogow broke into Hollywood by his early 30s and served as a producer on the pilot of the acclaimed NBC series Fame. The project earned him an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Drama Series in 1982. His later producing credits include Darcy's Wildlife, Playing for Time, Shannon's Deal, Flight 29 Down, and many more. 
though Rogow is best known for guiding both seasons of the Hilary Duff-centered teen comedy series Lizzie McGuire. He also executive produced the 2003 feature film that it spawned, the Lizzie McGuire movie. Duff, who was 13 when the series debuted, paid tribute to Rogow on social media, crediting him with playing a pivotal role in her career. Stan, thank you for thinking I had that special thing. Thank you for all of the Lizzie adventures. Thank you for helping create a reality I could never have dreamed of, she wrote. Rogow's work on the series earned him consecutive Primetime Emmy nominations for Outstanding Children's Program in 2003 and 2004. History to the existing one in the Peter Hall Diaries. Michael Blakemore, a stage director renowned for both his work on the West End and Broadway, died following a short illness. He was 95. After training as an actor at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, RADA, Blakemore moved into a career as a director. He first rose to national prominence in Britain when his 1967 production of A Day in the Death of Joe Egg transferred to the West End. He was an early member of the National Theatre, signing on as an associate director in 1971. Some of his biggest successes were 1982's Noises Off in London, 1983 on Broadway, and 1998's Copenhagen at the National, before it also transferred to Broadway in 2000. Blakemore remains the only director to win two Tony Awards in the same year, one for directing a play, Copenhagen, and one for directing a musical, The Revival of Kiss Me Kate. His final West End production was the 2014 revival of Noel Coward's Blythe Spirit starring Angela Lansbury. Blakemore also authored a novel, Next Season, and wrote two volumes of memoirs. He is survived by his second wife, Tanya McCallan, from whom he was separated, as well as his three children, Conrad, Beatty, and Clemmy, and three grandchildren. Recently, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has shared both physical and mental health updates. He injured his right elbow while filming the movie The Smashing Machine, where he plays former UFC champion Mark Kerr. The injury caused significant swelling, which Johnson humorously described as looking like a cantaloupe under his elbow. Fortunately, he later confirmed that while he suffered a ruptured bursa sac, there was no severe tissue damage. Johnson's recovery process involved humor and tequila, and he has since returned to work on the film. In addition to physical health, Johnson has been open about his mental health challenges. In a recent podcast interview, he spoke about his past struggles with depression and emphasized the importance of men addressing their mental health. He encouraged open conversations about mental well-being, noting that vulnerability can be a strength. Thank you for joining us on episode of Fame Story TV, where we remember and pay tribute to the lives and stories of remarkable people who have left us today. If this video touched your heart, Please consider honoring their memory by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. See you in the next episode.